For those of you just tuning in, uh, Grady had, this is not Grady, this is Charlie. He is just chilling, apparently. Um, Grady stopped eating last Monday and scared the living hell out of us because he wouldn't get up. He was all lethargic and we're like, oh, shit, is his kidney's getting worse. Took him to the vet and blood work's fine. His kidney's so fine. His calcium's fine. They gave us, we don't know. But he does have some gingivitis, so maybe we should do a dental on him. And in case you don't know, uh, if you don't have a pet, you think, oh, this is going to brush the cat's teeth. Yeah, this is fine. This is... No, 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 no. When they do a dental uh, on an animal, um, that means they get knocked yeah. out. And for some weird reason, it was me. Thank you. For some weird reason, you know, when you're a kid, you're led to believe being knocked out is incredibly cheap because anybody can do it. All you got to do is walk up to somebody. <laughs> yeah, they and, don't do it the cheap way, though. Right. All you got to do is walk up to somebody and whap them and they'll just fall down like a ton of bricks. They'll be uh, they'll be out. But no, no, it's not like that. See, actually putting people to sleep is very expensive, be it pets or animals. So, yeah, we we had it, it was it. He's fine now. He got they had some gingivitis they dealt with. They sealed up his teeth. It's just the second day during the dental, the, the doctor said, you know, I notice he, he's got some, a little upper respiratory thing going on in his nose. Oh, did you? Now you noticed. You know, this, we gave him a shot of antibiotics. Okay, good. Good, good on that. It's, good job. Well done. Me? Yeah, Simba just had his dental a few months ago, yeah. and he's officially a senior. He's a little old man. Yeah, I guess Grady's technically well, I'm he's glad it wasn't. I'm glad it wasn't anything super serious. Yeah, he's fine now. He's back to eating normal. He's, he's slowly starting to act like him himself. Except, you know, I had an out-of-wallet experience, Kara. Yeah. We've upgraded Simba from his keyboard to... They make like a cat laptop and like the where the keyboard would be is a scratcher and it actually has a fake seat screen with like a zoom call. I'll see he's sitting on it right now, so I can't show it to you. I show it to them. No, I'm going to sit on it for the first time ever. Okay. You sound a little insane right now. I'm just putting that out there. Have you met me? How long have you known me? <sighs> it's literally, it's a cardboard scratcher that's made to look like a laptop, basically. And the, the like, <sighs> the, where the screen would be, it has like a fake Zoom call with a bunch of cat faces. It's very cute. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And of course, it is the week after Crazy. Halloween, which has become a bit of a tradition here. Something happens during Halloween, and we always get the fallout of it in the news following Halloween. And that is, no matter how many years this goes by, no matter how long it takes, they are still, every Halloween, someone in a position of prominence has to make a costume that is completely racially and socially insens insensitive. Every fucking time. Clockwork. By now, we would have learned. You would be wrong. A Facebook photo depicting three winners of a costume contest at the Napa Valley Horsemen's Association, dressed as Native Americans, is being criticized as cultural appropriation at best and, quote, incredibly racist at worst. That's, um, there's a lot of real estate in there. That's yeah. one of those, it's either one or the other. Like, yeah, it's... The... There's a bit of a, there's a gap between those. You, you kind of need to those take a- Those are far enough apart that you need to just pick one. 
I mean, if those are far enough apart, you can like get like a three hour flight from one to the other. Yeah, that that's how far apart. Yeah. They are. The post, which features one contestant wearing a feathered war bonnet, was taken down by Tuesday afternoon. The image was posted by the association to pick three adult women with face paints, riding on painted horses, holding sticks with feathers tied to them, apparently wearing leather and turquoise jewelry. Napa Valley Horse Association, organization for horse enthusiasts established in 1939, did not respond to multiple requests for comments. Several comments saying the costumes were likely cultural appropriation were deleted in phases over both days. Comments praising the costumes were allowed to remain. Uh, let me see. There's a bit in here that just like I, I lost my mind. Um. Uh. Let's see, Lindsay Alexander. Uh, was let's see. No, that's not it. That's it. That's it. Um. Yes, in one of the deleted comment threads, one of the contestants winners said she, quote, studied a ton of native culture and everything I wore was authentic. She went on to say she didn't mix tribes or include anything demeaning as part of her costume, that she elevated and she was deeply that she was deeply respectful of native tribes. Yeah, except you, you people are in a costume. But I got it all right. It's period correct. It all matches. It was all, it was all canon. Remember cosplay Nazis? I don't mean people cosplaying as Nazis, though, when we were doing live action role play video with vampires. People would cosplay as Nazis. But I'm talking about the sure one. Was? Cosplay Nazis and, and uh, Ren Faire Nazis, they're the ones who go around criticizing costumes. Well, uh, yeah. That doesn't actually matter in this instance. You are the, the, their heritage, their identity. It's not a costume. Yeah. It's not how that, you can't just put it on and say, no, you know, I'm bringing attention to it. Why don't you just go get someone who actually is of the group and bring attention to them? Since you have this magic power to bring attention. Then they'd have to like talk to people that aren't white. Ew. <laughs> Every fucking year someone does this shit. Yeah. It's it's, it's exhausting. It's it's this is like it's it's almost like as clockwork as Black Friday when Black Friday was still a thing. Thank God it's died. It was so nice. I will dance on that grave. But yeah, every every time after Halloween, we have somebody done dressed up in some I, 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 pitch nothing else appeal to you. Nothing else. So many other ideas. So many. Like, Literally. there's so many other things you could do. And it, I guess I am assuming for this, your costume has to involve the horse. Yes, you could do stuff like just like Joan of Arc or some shit. That's just spitballing. You could be any number of characters from Lord of the Rings. They're not real. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. Elves don't give a fuck uh, if you're racist toward elves. You know why? Because there aren't any elves. Uh, you, could, you could do a lot of other things with a horse is what I'm saying. Don't, don't say that on this show. There, don't, don't say that on this show. That, that, that way lies madness. Yeah. Speaking of, we have a different kind of Halloween story this week. This is really an only in Florida moment. That there's nothing else to say here. This is definitely only in Florida. Likely human skull found in Halloween section of Florida thrift store. There it is. That's uh Yeah. An anthropologist made a surprising discovery in a Florida thrift shop's Halloween section on Saturday. Uh, the North Fort Myers shopper spotted a skull and recognized it as a human skull, according to the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Responding detectives also determined the skull belonged to a human. The store, the store owner said the skull had been in a storage unit that was purchased years ago. Okay. 
and also the sheriff's county's uh lee county sheriff's office is working with local medical examiner to run further tests on the skull officials do not believe the case is suspicious in nature no so you're telling me this dude buys like like you know storage wars he buys a storage box and it's got a human skull in it and he thinks huh that's neat and then the the, the, the sheriff's like huh that seems okay that's normal What's what's the non-suspicious way that you acquire a human skull besides the one in your head? What's the innocent way that you acquire a human skull? Right. And how how did you not know? Like, like, do you really not think it was did you really think it was fake? Somebody's going to be like, well, you can donate a body to your medical college. <laughs> right. But they don't just give away the parts they're not using. <laughs> so it's that... still suspicious if you got it there because it's not that's not how that works. Like this... They don't just give out the surplus. This come from somebody. And yeah, the... that, that's somebody's skull. And it should be noticed that. The dental records are going to be hard to come by because apparently most of the teeth got knocked out. Yeah. Under Florida law, no person shall knowingly offer to purchase or sell any human organ or tissue for valuable consideration. So technically, yeah, yeah, you're technically you've, this is breaking the law. I'm a little impressed that that law is still on the books, given it's Florida. Yeah. I just Honestly. how. How do you open up that storage unit and not immediately call the cops? Like that is completely me covering. That is me covering my ass. Slap the five dollar sticker on that motherfucker. That's me covering my ass because if there's like human remains around, I want everyone to know I called the cops first. I was the right. one who's like, not me. I am cooperating. I am not part of this shit. Yeah. That'll probably I get didn't shot make anyway. those. <laughs> My oh, other question no. is, yeah. how much did they price it at? That's they don't they don't say in the in the article. What they is don't. the going thrift store rate on a human fucking skull? Harry, Harry, how much is that skull on the in the Halloween section? Fifty cents. Fifty cents. I know, right? It's uh, all right. They don't think it was suspicious. They don't think this is. I mean, who doesn't have literally I a skeleton in the closet? Who doesn't? That's, that's. I think by nature that is automatically suspicious to right? me. But I'm not a fucking cop in Florida, <laughs> so I guess that's where my perspective is skewed. Yeah. Well, we go from Florida to uh, Las Vegas. And speaking of skewed perspectives, cocaine, marijuana induced mental breakdown may have contributed to naked Las Vegas police car theft. May have. Maybe. Fucking may have. <laughs> So much covering of the ass in this headline. Yeah. You think? Maybe. We don't want to make any assumptions. <laughs> but the coke and marijuana might have had something to do with it. Uh, the arrest report obtained by 8 News Now said the police first arrived at the intersection of Blue Diamond Road and Buffalo Drive after 11 p.m. Tuesday night. Finding a naked Clyde Cabalusian on uh, Cabalusian, yes, Cabalusian Clyde Cabalusian. That's a great name. Uh, finding naked Clyde Cabalusian walking in the middle of the road trying to get hit by vehicles. A viral video showed a battle with an officer at the intersection. Uh, after turning on his emergency light to prevent vehicles from hitting Cal uh, Cabalusian, Cabalusian. Cabalusin. It's it's killing me here. Cabalusin. 
Kablasan? I don't know. I'm trying here. That's not a name I've ever heard before. Oh, now they're fucking with me. Officer W. Catracala. You're killing me here. Um, is reported to have exited his Ford F-150 and the 29-year-old approached the driver's side door. Fight ensued when the officer directed uh, Kablusian uh, to the front of the vehicle and instead was punched several times. <laughs> Get in the car! Not the response he was expecting. I guess, that, I guess that's a no. Despite being able to pull him out of the driver's seat the first time, he was unsuccessful the second time and chose to disengage when the car began moving forward. Officers reported to suffered minor injuries. Uh, rest report later cites officers believe the suspect was driving up to 80 miles per hour and sometimes driving in the wrong travel lane for over six miles. Oh my God. For allegedly uh, occupied vehicle, uh, for colliding with occupied vehicle, uh, Kabalusian then allegedly fled the collision immediately on foot. Two other officers detained him roughly 100 yards north of the accident. Here's the line of the article. This is from the, uh, the attorney, the, the, the prosecuting attorney. Quote, why was he running around in the intersection naked? I mean, everybody wants to know that. Yeah, yes. we do. Did anybody ask? Welcome to our world. Welcome to our fucking life. This shit happens, and and nobody, no, no, nobody's. What are you doing? He's behind the it's fucking just monitor. Journalistic malpractice. Ask <laughs> the question. If if somebody says it's raining, you go to a window and you look. If someone says there's a naked man in the intersection, you go and ask him why he don't have no pants. Basic journalism. Right. And why he's doing that thing from the Madonna video where he's trying to get hit by cars. Did Madonna dump you? Cocaine I'm marijuana sorry. may have contributed. May. May have contributed. So, speaking of courts, uh, this one... There's, there's some certain decorum you have to obey in a courtroom. Unless you, of course, are incredibly rich and famous and that way they let you get away with any goddamn thing. Hey, did you see the news today? Um, yeah. But if you're not, well, this is typically what happens to you. Uh, this comes from uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Accused walks free. Victim sent to jail for calling alleged burglar's lawyer a fuckwit in Christchurch court. Charlie. Hold on. Get get your butt out of there. No. No. Get down. Get down. You know better. Get down. Be good. As it's serious, he's making the dad face. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Accused walks free, victim sent to jail for calling alleged burglar's lawyer a fuckwit in Christchurch court. A man charged with aggravated burglary has walked free partway through a trial while the victim, who was allegedly hit in the head with a hammer during the burglary, was sent to jail for calling a lawyer a fuckwit. Things got heated at a trial in the Christchurch District District Court when the burglary victim, Hamish Lucas, began swearing while being questioned. Things got even hotter during cross-examination when he was asked about the defendant, Marcus Bourne, having slept with Lucas's girlfriend. Oh. So there was a lot going on here. The self-employed father of three responded by picking up a water jug and throwing water on Bourne before being forcibly removed back to the dock. Quote. Like in the courtroom? Yes. On the stand. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Quote. Usually that's the area the defendant resides, not the complainant. 
Judge Tom Gilbert said in a recently unreleased decision describing how Lucas ended up being sent to prison for eight days for serious contempt of court. Like, okay, y'all might have grown up watching that Judge Judy shit. That that ain't how it works. No. That that ain't they they, they don't have time for all your shenanigans. They are not impressed. I don't know if you've seen that one that 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 viral one is like, what's your problem with him? He thinks he's Napoleon and this and the court cuts over and there's a guy dressed as fucking Napoleon. That that's how no. those that's the TV. The TV can do that. Yeah. You can't. You are not the TV. Um yeah. and judges are some of the most unimpressed people on the fucking planet. God, yes. There, uh, if we're talking about an honest one, their 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 belief in the their their faith in humanity has just slowly crumbled over the years. Um, yeah, it was alleged born and another unknown person went to Lucas's house apparently over a lo low level drug exchange that went wrong. When born and his associate arrived at Lucas's house, there was talk. Uh, there was talk about taking one of his vehicles. Lucas told him that would not be happening, and he was struck in the head with a hammer, allegedly by Bourne, while the other person smashed a window with a piece of wood. So basically, everybody involved here is, <laughs> is just, everybody fucking involved here is, I don't, I don't, I, I don't. How the fuck? Mr. Lucas, is it true the def defendant slept with your girlfriend, just lost his shit? Like, that, I don't think you understand, this is, it's not, it's not SmackDown, it's not Raw. Yeah. You gotta behave. Yeah. They will send you to the jail. And the opposing counsel, their whole job is to try and make you lose your shit. This is a really good lawyer. So that you so that you say or do something stupid that will hurt your case like that's part of their job yeah you gotta you gotta not fall for that you'd think but okay back to florida this is another this is what happened one of these happened when luke was here we had a story about a woman at a, ran a security company dr driving around with a car that was made up to look like a police car, Dodge Charger made it. It looked very similar. It was deliberately with lights and everything. That that was one thing. Um, do you remember when we were in high school? There were these T-shirts, the series of T-shirts, the Big Johnson T-shirts. Yeah. I don't know if they're still around or not. Like it, it, all of it is just, it's just penis innuendo after penis innuendo. And all the guys in high school love wearing them because they can get away. Oh, it says Dick, but it doesn't say Dick. So we can get away with it. You can't, you can't give me trouble. There were really people that thought that was the fucking height of wit. Yep. Well, they grew up and now <laughs> They, they they got bigger and older. Did they grow up? They grew up, and now they do stuff like this. Booty patrol caught by deputies after causing a stir on Florida streets. DeSoto County, Florida. The elusive booty patrol is on the run no more. After warning the public about a driver impersonating law enforcement under the, mon the booty patrol moniker, Driving the vehicle have both been located by DeSoto County Sheriff's Office. Traffic stop was conducted. The dri uh, driver was given a citation regarding Florida Statute 316.2397, which pertains to certain lights prohibited. What they are delicately avoiding mentioning is that this truck with the booty patrol, this is a border patrol look. This is how they how they 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 tag the border patrol cars. They just replace border patrol with booty patrol. 
and uh, thought it'd be fine. I mean, did they do anything? We don't. Or just we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, I realize it's illegal either way. Yeah, you you can't just you can't just go and say I like how that thing. You are not a transformer, okay? You can't go and look at a car and say I want to be that car. It's not how it works for you. You are a puny fleshling. It's just. You can't pretend to be. You cannot drive around a vehicle. And get, concerned that they were like pulling people over and demanding to inspect their ass. Maybe we don't know. But the main thing they got him on was having. This is why I don't understand how people don't can't have police lights on your car. Nope. That's like instantly you're in fucking trouble. Instantly. And I I don't know, like I wonder how they get them because at least, well, I mean, it's 20 years since I worked at mm. Spencer Gift, but we used to have the little fake siren light and we were specifically not allowed to sell it in red or blue. Right. Because this because is, right, man, there used to be one that people could put on their dashboard, and that was like mm -hmm. a, they were soon realized, hey, cops do that, we should stop letting people do that for the unmarked patrol car. And yeah. firemen in their own vehicles, if they're trying to get to a fire, they'll they'll have a blue light in the car. The dude, the dude will just, let them get through traffic if they're trying to get to the firehouse to get their gear on and stuff. They just thought this was so funny. Grown ass men. Yeah. How much work did this, how much money and work did this take? Which already the, board, the board, the board, sad joke. <laughs> already the border patrol is one of the most low aspects of law enforcement in the United yeah. States. Like, and that's fucking saying something. That is saying something. Especially like it's fucked. <laughs> if if you didn't know this, here's a little known fact about America. Um, technically, anything that happens but within a hundred miles of a border is the jurisdiction of the border patrol. That's like half the the country. That's like a hundred like the water is you know the border. So a hundred miles you, inland. <laughs> really only concerns itself with one of our four borders yeah yeah they're not worried about canadians yeah or atlanteans i wish I, I they're really worried about i wish i had the disposable income to do stupid shit like this because then i wouldn't do stupid shit like this i would do other stuff with my money i wish i had this money yeah you have stupid shit money who gave you stupid shit money? Because you don't deserve that. You don't deserve it. You should have to give it to less stupid people. Well, finally this week, um, there are a few big no-nos in the United States. Um, things you don't fuck with. You don't fuck with national monuments. You don't fuck with the White House. You definitely don't fuck with Capitol building. I mean, gotta, gotta establish that. And oh dear Lord in heaven, do not fuck with the nuclear power plants. Oh, yes, please don't do that. That I mean, that's not even just America. Don't do that anywhere. Authorities arrest man who led security on chase at a Coney nuclear station. That's near me. It's like a hundred miles upstate, but that's that's near me. Seneca, South Carolina. Is it, hmm? it Oconee or Oconee? Oconee. Because uh, there's a diner by that name on Long Island, and we pronounce it Oconee. It's Oconee. Oops. Seneca authorities have arrested the man who drove through an exit gate at the Oconee nuclear station, uh, led security on a chase through a dirt road in the facility, and then escaped. Doyle Wayne Weisenhunt, 66, of Locksburg, Arkansas. And if you're not in America, 
Um, there's a big gap between South Carolina and Arkansas. That's like three, four states over. Yeah. Um, Sheriff's Office went uh, sent a reverse 911 to residents in the area, advising them of the search for Weisenhunt. <clears throat> More like Weisenheimer. While deputies were searching uh, with canines, a helicopter and ground unit, and a man called to say he had found Weisenhunt inside of his vacant home. Deputies responded and took him into custody. Weisenhunt is charged with one count each of hit and run, attempted murder, malicious injury to property, trespassing. Um, Weisenhunt is currently wanted in our, in our Arkansas on drug and weapons charges. Weisenhunt's cool. car was a founded, a found abandoned deep in the woods. Incident began when Duke Energy Security called 911 and said a man had driven a silver 2002 Toyota Camry through the exit gate of the Oconee Nuclear Station. Officials said the man, later identified as Weisenhut, began advancing toward the plant and struck pop-up barricades that security activated to block the road. Weisenhut then backed her, the car up and drove down a dirt road in the facility where security blocked him in. After Weisenhut nearly hit the security officers blocking him in, he drove through a fence and headed toward the same exit he had entered through. Weisenhut attempted to hit another security truck with a garden side before driving onto uh, Highway 183, then drove into Pickens County and pulled into private property where shots were fired. Uh, investigators determined they were warning shots fired by a property owner. No shots were fired by security officers. So, <sighs> yep, this, this is just a wild-ass ride went on here. What was the goal? We don't know. <laughs> no one seems to ask so, this question. I feel like nothing good comes of giving your child the middle name of Wayne. <laughs> like as a first name, it doesn't seem to be as big a problem. But as a middle name, it's like a fucking curse. Don't do that. Why? Why would you do this? Like, this is like. This is this is like you are deliberately asking. For a world of hurt. Please lock me up in the worst prison forever. Was this like challenge mode? Did you, did, did you, this is hard mode. This, this is life on hard mode. That's what you were doing. Yeah. Apparently he let you've already you're already on the on the run for gun and drug charges. So you're like, well, I can make this better. This is this is what we call compounding the error. Like the minute you start getting frisky around a nuclear reactor. Everybody gets, you know, this, honestly, I feel like the minute you're there when you're not supposed to be, everyone starts to get real nervous. Like you can't just stop in to check it out. But it's just, just, it just. What the, no one asked the question. No one asked what the fuck happened. Why? It's been years of this, and I'm slowly going insane. I know. Look, you already have... Because no one ever asks, what the fuck was going through your head when you did this? You have the who, you have the what, you have the where, you have the when. You don't even need to do that much work. Just ask the one more. All the other shit's done for you. day one. It's day one. That is day one of journalism school, by the way. Day one. Who, what, when, where, why? How? It's me it, one. Like it's, I I am I am baffled. Oh, and apparently he hit another car on the way out. Also, it's it's hilarious that you know you're just running into the Oconee is it it's it's not exactly you know in a major metropolitan thoroughfare. It's a nuclear reactor. So the fact he's driving onto someone's property nearby and they're like they actually pulled out the shotgun. And we're like, get off my property. They, they really do that here. If you drive onto property without permission, 
They will post a sign that says, we will shoot at you, and then they will shoot at you. And that makes it okay. Chad is like, well, you know, it's probably that the motive is classified because of nuclear. We're talking about a pattern, guys. Not this one story. I don't know if you've all been paying attention for the last literal decade we've been doing this, Mm. but they never fucking find out why. They never do. They never circle back around on this. We're just, we're going to have this mystery in our brains. Why would you, well, you're already on the run for drug and gun charges. Why would you attempt to break into a nuclear fucking power plant? Were you trying to get superpowers? There's nothing in there you want to snort. Were you, or looking, snort. were you looking for mutant ninja turtles, perhaps? Maybe. Can you hear my cats thundering up and down the hall? No. It's Dottie and Valkyrie just stampeding up and down the damn hall. Yeah, this is why I have a noise gate on. I, I don't get to hear that. No. No. <sighs> It's like, I just, I, there are so many better crimes you could do. Just leave the nukes alone. So yeah, this is the first thing we learned this week. Is that someone will attempt to drive their ass wildly and recklessly on the grounds of a nuclear power plant, and no one ain't ever going to tell you why. I mean, maybe he was trying to prevent the apocalypse with the help of four children from a small town. <laughs> maybe Netflix going to sue somebody. Um, we've learned that if you have enough money to casually make up your vehicle to look like law enforcement in a humorous way, you have too much money. Yeah. Who gave you that money? They should not have given you that much money. No, they should take it back. They should take the money back. You would have too much goddamn money. Um, We've learned that when you are the defense, when you are the actual plaintiff in a court case, Calling the defendant's lawyer a fuckwit is a that that's a reversal. That's like an Uno reverse card. You you now think he are, might he might be a fuckwit. He might be a fuckwit. But you can't but you can't say that in the courtroom. You can't say that's not how that works. Um we have learned that cocaine and marijuana, when they are involved in a naked man stealing a police car. Yes, they may have contributed to what happened. (laughs) We've learned that if you find a a skull in a storage (laughs) unit, call somebody. Please. Don't just be like, well, mine now. Skulls do not exist in a vacuum. (laughs) There's well, there's context to well, every skull. Well, Terra skulls might exist in that in a vacuum if you smash them up with a hammer first. But there's context to every <laughs> skull. Yes. That belong to somebody. <sighs> somebody might want to know. And finally, this week we've learned as night follows day, some white person is gonna dress up like another culture and act like it's a costume every fucking year. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, get off the Charlie, get off the the mixer. Charlie, Charlie. (laughs) I just saw a little furry butt. Charlie. 